Presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, one. Hello, all. Thank you so much for joining Eric, Michelle, and I. Uh, this is Lisa Matthews. And uh, we are going to have Eric, I love you, Eric, talk about the power of our words and our thoughts. And, you know, how they can help us become more compassionate, not only for ourselves, but for others, too. So, um, Michelle, at thehealingh-art.com, will be channeling Eric. And Eric, what have you got to say? I'll give you the mic. I'm sure there'll be some mic drops there. Yeah, it is exactly what he did. It's exactly what he did. Is He picked up the mic and he dropped it. He's like, pew. He says, hi, Mama, <laughs> love you. I love you. <laughs> love you so much. Love you so much. Mm-hmm. He says, hi, everybody. He goes, I love you. He's given everybody a great big hug. And he just says, I just want you all to know how much I appreciate you. And mm. he says, if if you haven't told yourself or someone told you how good you are today and how good you're doing, he says, let me say it to you right now. You're doing good. He goes, good job for hanging in there and good job for keep putting one to the other. He goes, mm. give yourself a round of applause. So Absolutely. that's where he's starting. He says, that's some compassion, he says, for you. Yeah, give it to you. It takes courage to be human, man. So you guys are proud hard. of yourself. You are brave warriors, soldiers. It, it's very true, very true. Yeah. And, you know, um, working with Eric has been fascinating because there's been a lot of sessions that we've had where he's brought forth some past lives. And, you know, people that have amazing, extraordinary um, higher selves and experiences, and he's shown how, you know, you've come into this body and you've forgotten all of that stuff. He says, you forget how powerful and amazing that you are. Mm. So that's kind of what he's talking about today with the power of our thoughts and um, the power of our words, because they really do, when we start to pay attention to them, they really do start to open up that greater power in us. And boy, can they really do some things in our life. So he picked this topic specifically, and he said that, Um, something that he is noticing is he says that a lot of people, because he says, well, we're all shifting. So everybody, every single one of us on the planet are shifting. We may be Mm. doing it in different ways in our life. He says we're shifting in our, um, our culture. We're shifting in um, institutions. We're shifting in communities as individuals and families. There's so many different things that are taking place. And he says, um, this is vibrational frequency shifting. And he says that one big thing that he's noticed is there's a lot of people feel like their circumstances or people in their lives that they're repelling them. Like it's, it's like, um, I can't deal with this anymore. I can't deal with these people anymore. I can't deal oh. with the situation anymore. It's mm-hmm. like this, um, I'm changing so much. I'm not vibing with what's happening. I'm not vibing with this person anymore. And he says, and what the danger of that is, even though he goes, we may understand there's a vibrational shift taking. So it's understandable that we're not going to say, see things the same as we once did. Maybe people that we were close to at one time, we're not feeling as close to, we, you know, we're changing. And he says, and that's okay. But not that there's not that vibrational match between right. us and some people and us in, situ- in certain situations? Exactly. He says, Mom, that's exactly right. He says, because it, it's natural. We, when, we, when we change, we vibrate, we shift. He goes, so, you know, a couple of things will happen. If you vibrationally shift away from somebody or separate, that either means that you're shifting and that you will, because um, he says there's usually a follower follower and a leader so you will help lead somebody along to raise their vibration or you're going to just shift out of each other's lives you'll yeah. go in a different situation and he goes not jobs and homes and all kinds of other things he goes that's that's part of the process mm. but he says here's the thing he says not he goes there are many situations that can't change so for whatever reason it may not be the timing yet you may have some out like a contract with somebody you may have some learning or somebody else has some learning with you because you know maybe you're working with them 
maybe yep. you're living in the same house with them. And he goes, and so if you feel like you can't tolerate the situation or the person, what does that create? Well, it can create a lot of negativity, and it can make you feel yeah. stuck. Yeah. And he says, and the last thing that we need to do is create more shit for ourselves. Mm. He's like, we don't need to do that. Hallelujah. So he says, yeah, that's right. And he says, it's not necessarily practical for each one of us. Like, he's he's talking about... um. You know, we want to be alone when we're shifting. It's it's not uncommon for us to want to do this inner work and be alone, and we start to kind of move away. But he's like, he goes, well, that's not always practical for everybody. We can't always do that. He says there's things that we got to do, and there's often people we have to be with. So he says, what can we do? He goes, are you defeated? No, you're not defeated. He says, but here's the thing. He goes, now listen very carefully, he says, because this is a really, really simple practice and he's kind of laughing when he says because he says um it's a simple in terms but he says guys it takes consistency and it Mm. takes discipline to put this together but he says this is the number one easiest way to lift your frequency and to start to shift the way that you're viewing things so that you can feel more compassion for the circumstances, for the people, and for yourself to help move things along. And that to move you into a situation that's going to be better for you. That may mean to give you more opportunities because you're raising your vibration by doing this. And what he's talking about is, of course, our thoughts and our words. And he says, first of all, to remember that our words are like um, – he says they're like contracts. So our thoughts and wow. words are like speaking contracts all the mm. time. So he says, think of it. He goes, if you're in a negative tone or in a negative state of mind, he says your inner thoughts may be, oh, I hate this. This sucks. I can't. Oh, great. Here mm-hmm. comes so-and-so again. I don't want to deal with them again. He's like, think of how that links together. So it creates that continuous vibration of negativity. And he says, and that helps you in a lower vibration, look at the circumstances around you in a negative way. And he right. says, so, it, and that's easy to do. He goes, it's easy to do. But he says, what is that? So, Why is it easier to fall into negativity than to just sit in compassion and love and higher vibration? Why is it so hard? I, it is, I understand that, but why? He says, Mom, Mom, we're not fucking used to it. Not used to oh, it. He says, that's, yeah. that's not that's not the energy that we've naturally been sitting in. Oh, he says, okay. the, thing, the thing is, is he says, um, you know, for a very long time and often for a lot of us, he says, we've been going through the nine to five and punching the time clocks mm-hmm. and tired. And he goes, the heavier vibration is what has been the leading vibration on the earth so he says you know now yes the vibration has switched over so we've got like kind of a um he says like a a graph around the earth and around the collective but we're still moving into it so that takes commitment and practice to start to change those patterns but he says now is the time to really do it because This big window of opportunity is open. So when we start doing it, we have this extra help because vibrationally on the earth, we are being assisted because we're in a different energy, a different foundation. So he says that the practice that we want to put in, so he says really to to get the results, he says is, think of it this way, he says, if you're if you're having trouble in some situation, so just think of a circumstance right now. Think of somebody or some circumstance. He says that is kind of triggers you. Here's what he wants. Oh God, yes, I got he it. Says, got it. He goes, okay, guys. <laughs> he goes, time to play a game. So play a game with your words. Play a game with your thoughts. See how many times you can catch yourself when you're in this situation with a thought or with your words. How many times can you catch yourself and stop that, change that thought, flip that thought around? And he says, now, here's the thing. He goes, if you can do this and commit to two days, two days, he goes, that's all I'm asking you, commit to two days. 
And if you do that, you're going to start to notice a difference. He goes, that's literally yeah. how easy this is. He says, this is the most easy and direct way to raise your frequency. And why is that? He says, well, because when you commit to something, so here he goes, playing this game, you're committing. The intention is I'm going to speak kindly to myself. He goes, there's a contract. The intention is that I'm going to speak kindly to myself and others with my thoughts. He goes, there's another contract. He goes, the next thing is I'm going to do this, my intention, for two days. There's another contract. He goes, already you're on a roll because you're setting in intentions that are already laying out a foundation for your future over the next two days. And you're doing that right now. And he says, and then the next thing is when you start to do it, he goes, what that does is that shows you self-responsibility because you'll do it and you'll feel a difference. And it also creates trust within yourself. Ah. And he says, so these little games that you play um, helps you open up to new things because once you get to two days, you're going to push for day three. Once you get ah. to day three, you're going to push for day four. And he says, and here's the thing, guys, this is not about perfection. This is not about, oh, my God, I was doing so good because he's thinking about a diet. He's like, you know, oh, I did so Whoa. good. I didn't eat sugar for like four days. And then, oh, my God, I had a chocolate bar. He's like, no, it's, it's oh, my God, I did so good for four days and so I had some negative thoughts. All right. Well, what'd you learn from that? What came out of that? What'd you notice about that? How'd that make you feel? He goes, start right. to question yourself. Start to play with it. He says, start to play with the energy because he goes, as vibrational beings, you have so many options. But it looks like we don't. It looks like it's this one or the other. But when we start playing with different energy and we add that little bit of trust we add that little bit of commitment mm -hmm. and give ourselves these small goals he goes we're going to start to feel different and once we start to notice that not only are we feeling more compassionate for ourselves but we start to feel more compassionate for others he goes well then we start to realize that there are things about other people that we may have missed because we then able he goes with compassion really what that is is to be more accepting and more forgiving and more yeah you look through a different lens you know, exactly. when, you, when you raise your vibration, you're looking through a completely different lens at others and also yourself and life in general. I think that's I just exactly that. Right. That, that. That does not sound, I'm not smart enough to come up with that. So I think I, somebody just put that <laughs> in my head and I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> Eric, Eric, <laughs> he says, um, he goes, like, and the thing is too is, it's vibrational shifting. He goes, so it's also part of manifestation. He says, because when we start to power this up with emotions and compassion brings through emotions, when we can power this up, he goes, we can bring good things into our life that are aligned with us. We can right. continue to bring good things into our life. And he says, and when you do this, he goes, you not only notice how you feel, but you start to see people in a different light and they start to treat you differently. He says you might have somebody that you've had a lot of negative interaction with, but when you start to change and relate that inner voice inside you, you're going to start to notice that it's not going to be that way anymore. And he goes, and if it is, if you do have somebody that speaks real negative to you, well, remember you always have a choice. You can either express your voice and say, I don't like how you talk to me. I don't approve with how you talk to me. I'm not going to let you talk to me this. Or he says, walk away. You X that out of your life in whatever way you have to, or you do both. He says, but there's always options. And when you have that foundation of poverty in you, you see those options. You allow right. yourself to see those options. You're in a completely yeah. different state. And he says, guys, this is the easiest thing you could do for yourself and really what it takes is discipline and commitment and he goes and you know there's some that are thinking right now well yeah it sounds good i don't really know how i could do that but remember if, if you are in a more negative state because of what you've been feeling because of what you've been through understand that's part of it too because that part of the ego that wants to hold that back on you is going to keep saying to you no that's a waste of time no it's much yeah. easier to feel crappy oh. And he says, so overcome that. It's within you to overcome it. You superheroes. 
You're superheroes. Exactly. You're meant to overcome That's this. You to can overcome this. People. And, you know, how important, I'm just, this is a rhetorical question, is loving oneself in order to lead a life of compassion, not only for your, others but yourself. Learning to love yourself so that you can become your own authentic self, finally, instead of a self crafted by external factors and people and the media, etc. I think that is really, really important. And you guys got to know that you are lovable. When I'm in my skater field, every time I work on somebody, I keep telling them how perfect they are, how they are whole and part of God, how are, they are divine and vastly powerful, and how, how much they are loved and how they are actually the energy called love. So just repeat that mantra. I am whole and part of God. I am divine and vastly mm-hmm. so. I am loved and I am loved. I mean, I am perfect as I am. Just remember that. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Yeah, no, that, that's true. You know, Eric was saying something else here, too, is, um, like about self-love. And I'm teaching, um, I'm doing an empath course right now that mm-hmm. I'm teaching. And Eric's been popping in with that as well as my guardian angel. And he's just reminding me, um, when you said that, of something that had come through. And what they were teaching about was about how we source our energy, where we get our energy from. And, of course, these are all ways that we help teach ourselves how to source energy with self-love and, um, with, you know, putting more positivity in our life with different actions we can take. But what Eric is just saying is that when we understand that we are no longer – needing to source our energy from our outer reality. We don't right. need to source from other people, from their mm. approval. We don't need to source from, um, you know, uh, situations, the news, any of those things. We don't need to get our main source from that because when we source from ourselves, when we start to learn how to give ourselves that positivity, to give ourselves that approval, to give ourselves that trust, what that is is that's directly connected into source. And so Eric says that is taking your energy directly from all it is, from right. prime source, from God energy. Yeah, you and are. So you're continuously yeah. filling yourself up, and that is love. And that's how you're filling that up. So you're no longer depleting yourself of energy. Everything on the outside of you is temporary. Mm. It's only temporary. And it will not keep you going for very long or it will pull you down. So learning right. how to source that love from within yourself is so powerful and so important. Yeah, I mean, how, how, can how can you not love yeah, yourself? How can you not love yourself? You're a whole part of God. Truly. You are God. That's true. That's true. And, and Eric but, says, and, and for the one that's thinking, how can I not love myself? Because he says, there's somebody right now that's saying, um, well, I'm not very lovable, and I can think of how I can't love myself. He says, you are not your experiences. You right. are not your experiences. That and you are not you who other people. Out of pure love. Right. That's you right. are not who your experiences have told you you are. You are not who others have told you are who you are. You are not who the media has told you who you are. You are, you know, the, these external factors, just get some scissors in your mind and cut them all away and realize how divine and godly you are. Seriously. Yes. Yes. Don't make yes. mama tell you twice. <laughs> All right. That sounds great. Do you want to take callers? Eric, do you have anything else to say? No, he just he just says, I, I love you all. And he says that you've got everything within you to do this. So he yeah. says, give it a try. He says, wake up tomorrow morning. Take this next second now. He says, and it's something that you can do right away. And and he says, let us know. Let us know how it works. Yes, please. All right, I'm going to um, – uh, Michelle and I talked about a couple of people I've been working very hard on, and I just want to, uh, uh, you know, to summarize that with her so that when they, when they listen to this, they will understand and have some hope. Okay, we talked about Eva's son, Richard, uh, who has cirrhosis, and he still has uh, – he has diarrhea. And 
Eric says that it's some sort of imbalance somewhere in the sacral area, which is the gut. And my suspicion is that he was on so much antibiotics that he wiped out his good bacteria and mm-hmm. um, uh, and uh, developed an overgrowth of Clostridia difficile, which secretes a toxin that causes mm-hmm. diarrhea. And so Eric mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, I, I didn't have any leading questions, but he, he pretty much came to that conclusion for, for us. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And you can treat it with certain antibiotics. But actually, you could actually do a poop enema, believe it or not. But anyway, most people are like, I'll try the antibiotics first. <laughs> and also, uh, we're thinking that he, he's on too much of the laxative that is used to lower ammonia levels in, in people with liver failure uh, to prevent encephalopathy. But And also, he agreed that he should be on MCT oil to help the liver and to help gain mm-hmm. weight. So anything else yep. you want to say about uh, Robert's last initial D? Um, he says that you know it's it's a it's a climb, but climbing. Right, it's climbing. Okay. Yeah. He's not drinking anymore. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to be okay. Uh, when he yeah, gets stabilized, he, we're going to do the self love on him. Which will yes, help hopefully. And and mm-hmm. and he says that um, it's actually in the sacral and solar plexus area, which is having healing done energetically. Mm-hmm. So um, he's just saying that's why some of those troubles are happening in that area, but yeah. um, that's building up the confidence in there. And and um, he says that he, his soul made a choice. So he says that he he's going to be okay. It's going to be some work, but he's going to be okay. Oh, good. And then we have Roman uh, Claudius. Um, uh, um, Claudia, I can't, oh my God, I'm blanking out. I can't remember. I think the mom. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, you know, he has had, you know, heart trouble and we did the cardiovascular overhaul, but it takes three months to clear those blockages out. And he had a, he did really well when we did the scalar energy. But unfortunately, because plaques are still there a little bit, a thrombus grew on the plaque and he had a cardiac arrest. He had surgery, mm-hmm. opened them up. And um, anyway, opened up a second time and found pus in the coronary artery, flushed it out, but he's still having fever. And I told her she definitely needs to get culture, uh, blood cultures mm-hmm. and sensitivities and an infectious disease expert. But, I, I, you know, I'm feeling that there is a nice infection there. I asked Eric in the skater field if it was like the, the, the central line or pick line or Hickman, whatever he has. And then you take it out, culture the tip, and, and put a new one in. But he said no to me. Maybe I'm wrong because I'm not that good at that. But um, Eric told Michelle that it's something in the chest, which I mm-hmm. suspect. So, um, mm-hmm. and and you uh, seem to indicate there's probably an abscess somewhere in the chest. Yeah, there's some there's something there that he's identifying as being a, a root of it. Yeah, Can some sort of a, a, a something that should. Be. Um, oh, um, yeah. It almost looks like um, it looks like a blister. Okay. Like a blister. Um, would it make sense that it would drain on its own? That it could be getting into his blood. I don't know. I mean, it depends on where it is, really. But I mean, if it's if it's something that needs to be drained, I'm wondering if, if he has to be opened up again, or if it can be drained just by interventional radiology, stick a catheter and drain. I don't know. I don't know enough about. Yeah, it it doesn't that. feel like he's ha- that he has to be opened up again if it gets handled like sooner than later. Does he need a change in antibiotics mm-hmm. or addition or whatever with the ID the infectious disease expert? Um, uh, Eric said there may need to be a stronger antibiotic. Okay. Last but not least, um, Sean, Deborah's um, husband who has a melanoma, um, he is in recovery room right now. And, uh, you know, I went to a couple of lymph nodes, but uh, the margins from the resection are clear. He got grafting today. Is there anything mm-hmm. that she needs to know or he needs to know, Sean? Last initial is T. 
I've been working on him a lot. Was this on his head or neck? No, it was on his heel. Part of the age, though. Oh, on his heel. Mm-hmm. The Eric thing that's successful, um... I don't know why he's pointing out to the head or neck, but um, you might want to watch for some different areas. Oh, well, they're going to get a, a, I think they're going to get a head CT to make sure it hasn't gone there at all or or any of the lymph nodes there. But the local lymph nodes, I think one or two were positive a little bit, just a tiny mm-hmm. bit. And uh, the, he's starting immunotherapy soon. Um, so hopefully that, I, I told, I, I after the immun, they don't want to start it with the immunotherapy, but I thought maybe um, a low dose naltrexone would be good for him. It's been proven to be very successful in many cases of melanoma, like yeah. many other cancers. So, yeah. And, but I, I agree. You don't want to. They don't want to mix it. So I just wait until they're finished with the course of immunotherapy and then start it. All right. Good. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me do this for my people that have been working so hard. These are. Three mm-hmm. people are really devoted. Oh my God, so much mm-hmm. energy and love to. And so, thank you guys for letting me um, just take away from your mm-hmm. ability to ask questions. I really appreciate that. Okay, we got somebody from the. Uh, oh, let me try that again. From the two eight one area code. How you doing? <laughs> Hi there. Are you there? Hello, you wait one there Yeah, there you are. Yes. Hey. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is Eleanor. Hey, Alicia. Hi, Thank Eleanor. You for taking my call. Sure. Hey. Um. So. Uh, I um. I'm having a problem at the home, and uh, I was told it was an earthbound spirit, but um, it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh. <clears throat> And um, it's very difficult for me to talk about because it's um, it's it's been in the home for at least a year, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I'm just kind of figuring this out. But uh, it uh, came to me um, and told me it was uh, my husband Todd, but uh, he passed away, right? Yes, and um, it didn't know some pretty essential things between him and I, so I quickly figured out that wasn't true, and um, it basically uh, built a psychic connection with me and wouldn't let go, so it was like constantly talking to me. The, the ERP has helped a lot with that. But okay, they, I, um, okay. I, I will say, Michelle, we did the ERPE um, mm-hmm. on March the 1st, so not that long ago, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, she, I, I can't remember, she probably did have earthbound spirits, but that doesn't mean that she didn't have negative entities that, you know, that um, mm-hmm. were getting rid of it. Anyway, she lost Todd, yeah. her, her beloved husband. Um, how long ago was that, Eleanor? I lost him three years ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, from a car yeah. accident. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? Yeah. Eric? Um, hi, Elder. Um, Eric is just showing me. Um, he's calling this soul um, like a traveling soul. No, um, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Michelle. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm leaving out some important things. Oh, because ahead. Okay. this thing is like <laughs> it's got a physical presence. It um it has a physical presence. Uh, my motion sensors uh, on my indoor mm-hmm. home security system are the only mm-hmm. things that record its sound. It won't mm-hmm. trip a microphone. It moves things around. Mm-hmm. Um. It, it it's always here. It's not yeah, like a when wayward I, soul. No, no. When I mean traveling, it's not human. 
It's not human. What I mean, like, a, no, it's it's taken up home with you. Um, it's taken up attachment. I don't with want you. it here. No, it well, it's, uh, it's saying you... it. It doesn't want me alive. <laughs> like oh it, it, it is out to uh, to get me to uh, like it, it. It is not a benevolent spirit. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> it is not a benevolent spirit. Like literally, I had yeah, to I put capsaicin in the water supply, and it got sick and left like some weird mucus thing that uh, won't dry up in the garage. I've left it there. I wanted to send a sample to the lab. Like, I feel that this thing is an extraterrestrial living in my house. <laughs> um, you could call it next. I can feel it, and I can feel it talking right through you right now to me. Um What Eric is saying is that part of this, there's two parts of this. One is because it is connected to you right through the psyche. And so, I mean, there's angel assistance to help you there, but the problem is is that you need somebody physically with you. Like, yeah. Um, Exorcist or something? Um, yeah, Eric says that right? if you if you look up now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It does have a very physical presence, but it feeds off of the fear, um, like them do. And he's comparing it to like a poltergeist energy, so it can can move things, it can do things, and, and the more fear that's built, the, the more powerful it gets. But what Eric says is, there's also um, something to do with your energy because he said that it will oh, surrender. I felt that. Yeah. It will yeah. surrender. Yeah. Um, I, I do recommend that you look for somebody local that has a shaman ability. That's a shaman. Um, because somebody I have done, specific- we have done the ERP on a recent team up very recent, just like um, two weeks ago. Yeah. And, and that always and takes care of, uh, of these negative things. So I don't know what's going on. It's very, what's going well, on, Eric? Because because Eric says, um, so what's there that can be lifted is lifted, but he says this is something that's attached within her that needs to have a specific type of surrender. Because it's, it's well, it makes almost sense. like a, it's a contract, too, with you. Um, oh it has God. something to do with your energy. And Eleanor, um, there has been awakening. Uh, I, I I don't know how much you know about your own psychic sense and your own ability, but you have one heck of an ability in there. And wow. this thing knows. This thing well, knows. I that. have like, despite like it's been so ugly. Like it came to mm-hmm. me, and it was just like, I want you to lose everything. And it was like, I touched your head, so you're going to have a stroke and aneurysm. I mean, like, literally, we're going on 11 months of this. And, like, none of yeah. those things happen, you know. And um, so first it was a cloud of schizophrenia and a poltergeist. Then it was a demon. Then it was an earthbound spirit. And, you know, now it's like, okay, oh, finally. finally earthbound demon, extraterrestrial. That could be happen. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, yes, uh, Michelle, do you think she needs to have a longer conversation with one of the mediums? Yeah, uh, because we, yeah, you do, you do, because there's a lot more detail to this. That I mean, we could sit here for the next hour and discuss the intricacies of it because that I can feel and sense this thing right there talking through you, and mm. its main okay. thing is fear. Because I'm going to tell you something, Eleanor. If you your strength is way more than that thing is. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, have so like, oh, oh, I, I have figured that out. I have figured that out. Because out basically here. it's Get like... Out of here. You're not belong yeah. here. You're not welcome and, here. You need to be strong with this right. thing. And what yeah. about saging to Palo Santo? Saging to clean the slate and Palo Santo? I've tried that. that. 
That's probably not enough. I've tried that. The other thing is, too, is Eric, Eric says it's dissipated, and right now it's hanging on for dear life. Just to Good. let you know. Yeah. Is there anything that – so, and that's what it feels like. And that's yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. Is, is there anything Eric and the Divine Team can do? Yes, me? Eric said that um, you do you do have angelic assistance there. He says, call on them. Call on us. Call on Archangel Michael. And he says, and, and it's something that um, it feels like a very physical experience for you to have mm. this removed from your house completely. So that's part of, part of it is, is experiencing that shift for you. Yeah, and it's, it's not so much that its power has dissipated. It's like with every ERPE, there's clarity. Yeah. And so when there's clarity, it's like, I know what you are. I know what you are. And I've tried to stop yeah. being angry with it. There's so many times where I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, let's try to figure something out. But, like, it's it lies constantly. It's just. You can't reason. You can't reason with it. It's not. It's no, no, not, no. Okay, for well, a reason. You can't reason with it. You okay. just need to let it take we the probably, We probably need to give, uh, you know, a time for other callers. But, Ellen, I mean, uh, Michelle, who can she get a, an appointment with the quickest, do you think? She get in with the quickest? Yeah. Um, you know who's coming up in my head right now is Eric saying there's a um, Stephanie and Nora. Stephanora, What's your name? Um, uh, Stephanora, Stephanora, Stephanora. Stephanora. I'm trying to think of the name of her business, but she deals with entities. I think that's well, what bringing um, forward. That's somebody that that's uh, not local to you. Um, Eric says, if you want to get somebody local, he's like literally saying, go on the internet and Google because you have pe- shamans. He says you need a shaman. <laughs> Well, let's look at mm-hmm. Steph Anora, E N O R A, I guess. Look that up, Ellen, oh, and see where it brings you. Anora's corner. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. You bet. All right. Thank thanks. you. Oh, she's a brave girl. Oh, my God. The thing she's been Yeah, Oh, I, my I God. I feel that. I could feel that energy. Oh. I could feel that. And I did that everything is, I could. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Well, er, just, Eric said, too, he's like, Mom, he goes, sometimes some of these experiences as well is there is a a pull from the human. Right. And that pull is part of their contract to go through this. Because there's pieces that he was explaining that he's like, we we don't always know the whole puzzle because it's part of what we're working through to be able to learn and grow ourselves. And he just says that thing can't hurt her. It can't hurt okay. her because she Good. is more powerful. And, not hurt and, her. and this is awesome. what she's learning is her power. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Maybe this is the contract, like you say, for her to learn yeah. how powerful she really yeah. is. All Got right. it. Got somebody from the 757 area code. Hi there. How you doing? 757 area code. You there? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, good hey, evening, how are you doing? Michelle. Good evening, Hi. Eric. Uh, this is Andre uh, from Virginia Beach. My love and appreciation oh, to you. Yes, Virginia Hi. Beach. Hi. Welcome back. What you got for us? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I started work two hours away from my home and kind of like separated uh, five days a week from my family. And I would like to get advice. Uh, from Merrick, uh, how to transfer, make, make my relationship with my wife, make it stronger. Um, how to strengthen okay. our relationship? What what can I can do? Yeah. Mm. Something that he's recommending is he says um, doing something creative with her um, in the time that you have, because he says your time is limited. The amount of time that you have. So he says, do something out of the normal with her um, that helps focus the intention on the two of you. And he says something that give gratitude to the relationship, that do have you feel gratitude within your relationship, appreciation for each other. Something she would not expect. Something she would not expect. Um, Writing her a love letter. 
writing her a love letter. Oh, writing her. Women know that guys have a hard time with that, so that would be big. Wow. That would be very big. And and Eric says, can you list the, the things that you appreciate? He goes, think about your time away when you're traveling to work. Can you think about the things that you appreciate about your wife, that you appreciate about your relationship? He says, because what that's also doing is that's helping flip a switch of the things that you feel guilty about or the things that you feel on that flip side of things. He goes, let's turn that around. Let's start focusing into the gratitude, into the appreciation. So start that by writing her letters when you're away. And he says, and, and leave them with her when you're away. Oh, he girls says, will eat uh, that up, man. Andre, you got to mm-hmm. do that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and why, uh, like, why do you say it, the time is limited? Like, what is his coming? No, I What's mean, so it's, it's hard to find another no, time like in the your, day. No, like your time, like it, time in the like, day, like you're, you're yeah, working. It's not, and, yeah, it's not like somebody's yeah. going to die or anything. No, it's just like no, it's no, hard no, to no, find no. time. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you're busy. You're busy. So yeah, he's looking busy, yeah. for these ways mm-hmm. that are are gestures, he said. They're gestures. Mm-hmm. They're they're doing these things that are, um, he says, cost of the heart, giving of the heart not giving financially, not having to make these big grand gestures, but these really heartfelt gestures. Because he says, if you dig right into the depth of your soul, he says, there's so much that will pour out and touch her and it will help bridge more bonds between the two of you. I think little notes, like little poems on the pillow. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Even if you didn't, don't write it, but little things from other people. Wow. Can you imagine? It's it would be beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Like you can Google yeah. uh, po- poetry to to um, enhance your love life and your relationship. Yeah. Thank you, Andre. Yeah. Thanks, Andre. Okay, got so much from the nine five one area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello, Lisa. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hi. Who we got? This is Donna from California. Hey. Hi, how Donna. Doing, California? Yes. Hi. Um. So Eric is one of my guardian angels, and I just want to know if he has any messages so rare. or. That is so rare. Wow. You know what yeah. that means? That Eric does have lives together. Because at least from my experience, anytime somebody wants to know their guardian, and Eric comes up, he's always, always it's always been a, a situation where they've had li- lives together, basically. But okay, Don, I'm sorry. What did you want to ask, Eric? It's- um, just if he has any messages or is there anything that I should, that I need to be working on? Hmm. Okay, let's see here. He goes, Donna, Donna, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> he says, okay. Well, he says right now you're going through um, pulling in more courage. Um, he says you, your experiences are also helping you practice and trust. And um, uh, he's talking about letting go, um, letting go of some things that are pulling your power away from you. So are these situations or people? Probably maybe people. Because he's talking about, um, okay, hang on here. He says sometimes we stay in patterns um, with people that are there because we're fam- we're familiar. You know, it's something that's familiar to us. And he's talking about you having more peace, life, creating more peace. Mm. And so there's okay. some people that seem to pull away from that peace. In some mm-hmm. ways, so he's asking you to do that and to have courage. And this may not mean really cutting people out, but maybe moving the focus off of them or not giving them, giving your power away to them. Okay. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And he's also talking about your creativity as well, Donna. Oh. 
um, asking you to really get into your creativity. Okay. Your talent. I always I feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm a really creative person. I kind of have some trouble with that. Is there anything I can do to bring out my creativity? Well, he's saying movement. Do you like to dance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's, he's talking about um, let's not think about something that's pouring out as, like, arts and crafts, he says. I know, movement. or painting itself. Yeah, exactly. He's showing it's the so body, of, like, movement. You know, Google all forms of creativity. You'd be surprised how many types of creativity or the expression of the soul there are, people. So many. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, he says, Donna, get down with your bad self. <laughs> get down with your bad self. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Thank Donna. you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I know who she is. She's very, very sweet. Okay, yes. five, eight, six, area codes. What's up? Hi, how are you guys doing? We're doing Hi. good. Hi. Have you? This, I'm good. This is Michelle from Michigan. I um had some scalar services um, probably like a couple of weeks. I don't know. It was a little while ago. But um, I just wanted to call in to see if um, – I wanted to get it done for a disease that I have, and I wanted to see if it was gone or do I need another service. And then I also wanted to see, like, um, like what was removed, like, with the services, like, if, you know, anything that would be rele- relevant for me to know. Now, what is your uh, first name again? Um, Ishan. How do you say it? Spell it? Uh, I S H A W N, but um, it's Giovanna. It's my. Um, I just go oh, by Sean. Oh, because you guys. I mean, really. I mean, you totally confused me. All right, got it, got it. Okay. But Giovanna is your legal name. Got it. That's what yeah. I use. Okay, great. <laughs> so, Eric, did we remove yeah. negative? Were the negative entities or about spirits? Um, alien implant. Um, what was removed from her? Um, he's saying that there was some masculine energy that was removed from her, that was spiritual. Okay, yeah, so um, masculine, feminine uh, rebalancing energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's also saying that there was some something removed from the throat chakra, on oh, um, the throat yeah. area, like they were holding her back, holding her back okay. from speaking. Um. And direction, were you looking to have, like, a more focused direction in your life? Yeah, I feel like I'm always looking for that. <laughs> because he he's showing, like, um, being grounded, like, grounding you, and he's showing the feet, and he's pointing your feet in the same direction. He takes it from, like, your feet are pointing away from each other, and he aligns them so that they're together. And pointing straight forward. Yeah, grounding is also one of the things that we do with the ERPE. Um, yeah. What did, mm-hmm. do, you, do you mind sharing the disease that we're dealing? Or, or if, if you don't have to if you don't want to. But yeah, I would rather not say. But um, I'm interested okay. in knowing if it was removed or if I need like an additional service for it. So whatever disease hmm. Giovanna has, did we take care of it, or will, does she need? The um, service for that disease. Um, okay, hang on here. He says yes, but he also talks about it being a six-month process. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I keep telling people it's really important to give the first step, the ERPE, a chance instead of just going crazy and ordering a bunch of services that are unnecessary because this one service really does handle so many things. It, it doesn't handle everything, but I just plead with people to be patient and not overorder, um, you know, because I, I don't want you to spend money unnecessarily, basically. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely don't want to do that. So I just wanted to call in. I was like, let me call and see if what I need to do, you know, what's the next step. So I can definitely be patient because I won't be doing anything oh, else. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what, and he says that's the very best thing because he says that 
Um, he goes, you know, when when we are sent out to start working with your energy, he says, you know, sometimes somebody is in a vibrational place where things can move very quickly. And then at other times, he says, there's multiple layers and, and it's not always the best for you to have something removed right away or not always possible, depending on yeah. where it's connected, where it starts from. So he says, but it's it's consistently being worked on. So the best thing for you is he says, have the discipline of the mindset that it has been removed. Okay. He says, hold hold that mindset. That's important. That intention and that mindset is important. Speak of it as it's been removed. Speak of it as yeah, okay. it's in the past. Inner energy is amazing. Because because it is. Is it. It's like the inner, the, the, uh, what do you call it? Energizer bunny. We keep, you know, even after I give you that email that it's done, we keep working on you. And, and, um, <laughs> and for example, trapped emotions. I mean, there's some people that have so much and they are at an energetic vibration that it's not ready have it all, you know, released and and, uh, and um, destroyed, whatever, right away. I mean, we have to te- treat each person differently. We have to be careful with you guys. You're all different. It's true. Yeah. And and he says too. He just adds. He says, you know, um, if you were to see what would happen if something was removed right away. He goes, it's like, um, have you ever heard somebody who has a spontaneous spiritual awakening right away? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and he goes, yeah, and that, that is very difficult to ground. So he says it's, it's important that we help you balance your energy and to help keep you in a place where it's acceptable and, he says, and lasting for you. Yeah, and for all of okay, you guys, okay. sometimes it takes, like, we got to make sure this person's grounded first. got to make sure the higher self is anchored fully into their energetic body. And then little right. by little, touch the ancestral DNA. Little by little, you know, uh, find and reattach soul fragments. Little by little, release trapped emotions. So, you know, we, we treat all of you guys with kid gloves. All right, thank you. Thank you. By the way, I just got word from my daughter, Christina, that Houston, I did the snoring thing on him. No more snoring. Awesome. Yay. She can sleep now. And she, you know, she has a little infant, so that's a plus. That's awesome. And Juliet had horrible, her little, uh, how old is she, nine months old? Had horrible allergies, and now they're gone. So, and uh, Christina's, oh, awesome. um, well, I'll, never mind, I won't share that. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Never, okay, I, okay. Three two three area code. Hi there. How you doing? Okay. How about you? Good. What's your Hello. first name, and how can we help okay. you? My Wait, name's Joe. Me. I came across. The, oh, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey, I came across the show because the uh, marquee said, "How can we experience more compassion?" So it made me wonder. Are you talking about people experiencing it, being the recipient of it, or are you talking about people giving compassion to others? All of the above, maybe. All of the but above. Eric, can you know? That's a great yeah, question. Eric, Eric says all of. Um, what we were talking about tonight was the the power of what our words, our thoughts, to be able to shift our own vibrational frequency so that we could then experience more compassion. It would help us have that that outlook for more acceptance for ourselves, more acceptance for others. Was there something in particular that you need some help with or that you wanted to discuss? No, nothing about me. I just wanted to know on a, um, on a level of just being curious, what exactly did you right. mean? But you've explained it. Um, person to change their attitude I guess through words or I guess vibration I don't know if you're talking about holistic uh, means or not to uh, to be able to have more empathy with other people am I getting it uh, correct yes yeah so what Eric says is one of the easiest ways to be able to uh, create the experience of more compassion self-compassion for other people uh, is to be able to, he says, kind of play a game with ourselves where 
in the circumstances that we have with people, whether it be in relationships or whatever it is, that we look at our thoughts, that we look at our words, and we start to choose them better. You know, we start to look at more positive words. And what that does is that starts to shift on a, on a vibrational scale, allows more positive energy into our life. And as that vibration shifts, that gives us that outlook where we're able to have more acceptance, where we're able to have hmm. more forgiveness. So like on a scale, and, and what Eric was sharing with us is to try that for a couple of days, you know, to, to play with that for a couple of days and see how that starts to make a change in your life like an experiment. And, and, and I will say okay. that it's all physics. You know, thought creates reality. By collapsing the Schrodinger wave equation, changing light waves into photons that can be then reassembled according to that thought into a new reality, just make changes in one's life. So to, to really be careful, be weary of your thoughts uh, because you can create realities that you really don't want. But I'm sorry, I interrupt you, Joe. What you got? I was I was going to ask what kind of words uh, would you two be talking about in order to change one's perspective? What you got here? Change perspective. Well, perspective. Eric, it kind of goes along. It kind of goes along the same lines because he says to be able to open up the perspective to be able to see other uh, options or other realities, we want to look at things that will start to raise our vibration. Because raising our vibration gets us out of a more dense frequency. Because when we're in a dense uh-huh. frequency, a heavier or a, a more negative, like looking through a straw. So we have that perspective. We're not able to see as much. We're not able to experience as much because we're in a more vibration. So doing things to raise the vibration, which we can do in many different ways. So the thought, the, the choosing in that way, yes, we can do that. We can food we can do it through exercise we can do it through music there's many it's different funny. ways that we can work on our vibration mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you're talking oh. about words that would help a person become more um, empathic with others well i mean so, you know, um, that, I'm wondering... that everyone around you is whole and part of god it's like a holographic universe that there's one sentient self-aware thing called energy called source God, whatever you want to call it, and we're like a hologram. We're a whole and part of that, like the old skull uh, necklaces on a leather chain that we used to have. And then when I was a kid, you break it, you see the skull, you break it, and you look in the microscope, and there's that skull there. So we are all whole and part of everything, basically. Mm-hmm. And so if we could see others like that, that's great. Joe, do you have any final? I mean, Eric, do you have any final messages? Because Joe's like me, he's very practical. He wants practicality. But I think, uh, Joe, uh, do you have any messages specifically for Joe, Eric? Hmm. Well, he says, yeah, he's a pretty smart guy, and he likes to break things down and figure them out. Yes. And uh, look, look for new ways of, of looking into things. Um He's just saying, um, I don't know if you're going through some changes yourself or you're you're trying to see things differently, but he says that there's a, a reality that you're experiencing that you're letting go of, and that's part of your curiosity and what you're asking about. So he's just saying mm-hmm. that you're on the right you're on the right track. Mm. Awesome. Oh, okay, well thank you, and um, enjoy the rest of your show. Bye. Thanks, right. Joe. Thanks very much. Only 26 Bye. seconds left. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining our show. I really love this. And um, you guys get in touch with wonderful healer and healer, Michelle Gray at thehealingh-art.com. Love you guys. Pray for the Ukrainians. Love thank you. you to all of you who participated yes. in our world prayer this weekend. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.